Uh, a sixth grader, big sister, animal lover, author, and spo spoiler alert, warrior. Um, from kindergarten on, Talia has worked with her parents and a therapist to learn about anxiety and find creative ways to manage it. She and her mom decided to turn her ideas into books to help other kids. The Monster Tea Party characters and story are all from her imagination. Talia intends to become a teacher for young children and to continue writing. Ellie is a mom to Talia and her little brother, John, wife, photographer, writer, and very much also a warrior. Having dealt with anxiety since she was very young, she has spent decades working on it with therapists and reading countless books on the topic. With her and Talia's shared love of language and beautiful picture books, they love creating together. They live in Sarasota, Florida with their fluffy, lovable, and anxiety-ridden dog, Charlie. So I'm going to turn it over to Talia and Ellie, who will read their beautiful book, and then I'll join them up here, ask a few questions, and if all of you want to be thinking of some questions to ask, we'll have time for that at the end. So we can give them a round of applause, then give them all of our attention. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Monster Tea Party, and our lovely illustrator, Fru Farkas, is in Hungary, so she can't be here. We wish she could. Sam did not like bedtime. Well, that's not entirely true. Taking a bath the sun, brushing his teeth while listening to his favorite song, not bad at all. Cuddling next to his mom while she read to him using silly voices for all of the characters, great. The tricky part about bedtime was the actual going to bed part. When his parents would say goodnight, flip off his light, and shut his bedroom door. <laughs> yep, that's the part he didn't like. In fact, he was terrified. Because that's when he heard them, the monsters. They shuffled around in his closet, sometimes muttering words he couldn't quite understand. He knew for sure they were out to get him. Why else would they be in his closet? He was left with no choice every night. Dad! They're in there, Dad. I know they are. They stop making noise when you're here. There are no monsters left. I promise. Go to sleep. And every night, his dad would come and tuck him back into bed. And Sam would finally fall asleep as the monsters went quiet. No one believed her, even his best friend Edie, and she believed she could turn her dog into a unicorn if she could just find the right star to wish on. Not his gram. Oh, Sammy, she chuckled. Your father used to be scared of creatures under his bed. He even thought something lived in our attic. Maybe a mouse, I always told him. My silly boys. One night, Sam turned on his bedside lamp before calling out for his parents. And there they were, three identical monster triplets peering at him. Dad! Another night, the closet door creaked, and Sam forced his eyes to pry open to see the monster, a, gigi a gigantic robot with glaring, flashing red eyes. They're trying to get me, Sam cried. They're so scary. It's okay, Sam. There aren't any monsters, his dad assured him. Go to sleep. Sam finally told Dr. Joe, who helped him with his worries, about the monsters. She didn't try to tell him they didn't exist, or that he was silly for being scared of them. Together, they talked about what he was afraid might happen. Just that made him feel a little better. Then, they talked about what he could do. What's the worst that could happen, Sam? The monsters will hurt me. What do you think will really happen? Maybe they won't be real? Okay, let's come up with a plan. The very next night, when he heard the mumbling from his closet, Sam had his chance to try out their plan. First, he turned on his nightlight. Next, he got out of bed. His heart was racing, and his hands were sweaty, but still, he walked toward his closet. With trembling hands, he opened it. Oh, yeah. Sam couldn't believe his eyes. Wait, you're real? And, and you're afraid? Hello, yes. So 
sorry to disturb you. My name is Wayne. These are my brothers, Francisco and Salvatore. Very, very sorry to frighten you. We try to be quiet as mice. How about you, same as the robot? That's Paul, Wayne says. He doesn't speak, just thinks. We're terribly sorry you worried me all those gloves of yours. You can't let them see us. They scare us ever so much. Sam was shocked. And the monsters you catch frighten him for so long. We're afraid of his own parents. So, you're not here to get me? Sam asked nervously. Get you, Wayne asked. Absolutely not, Francisco declared. Salvatore added, goodness no. Wow, well, I'm Sam. Nice to meet you, Sam said to the not-so-scary monsters. He realized he was still shaking. His heart was still racing. He took a few deep, slow breaths. Then he had an idea. Do you know what my grandma always says when I'm feeling upset? How about some tea to calm my nerves, Sammy boy? So, why don't we have a tea party, Sam suggested. They agreed to meet the next night to enjoy a relaxing bedtime tea party. Lovely. Great. And they did. The next morning, Sam's grown-ups cheered for him. You went to bed all by yourself last night, bud. No more monsters anymore, love? Actually, I met them. Wayne and his brothers are super nice. They like jasmine tea, just like you, Graham. And Paul, that's the big robot, his eyes were glitching. That's why they were blinking red. I helped him reset his switch, and now they're green and not scary. Oh, yeah. I want you to meet them, but guess what? They're yeah. afraid of you. Yeah. Graham chuckled. Yeah. Sam didn't know if they believed yeah. him, but it didn't matter. He felt proud and brave. And many nights after that, Sam and his new non-monster friends would meet for a cup of tea, sometimes even a quick board game. Anytime one of them was afraid or anxious, they would all practice Dr. Joe's tea time breaths. Smell the tea by breathing in slowly through your nose. Cool it down by breathing out calmly through your mouth. Ah, I do feel more relaxed. Beep. Me too. I wasn't even scared, and I'm calm. But I'm calmer now. Yeah, I'm getting sleepy. Before long, their thoughts would stop racing, their bodies would calm, and smiles would form on their sleepy faces. The triplets and Paul would go back to the closet, and Sam would crawl back into bed to try to talk to sleep. Sam never did figure out what the noises in the attic were, but he was no longer afraid of what they might be. It's Grumbled, a shy, kind, attic dweller. Doesn't bother anyone. Just munches on snacks and hangs out with mouse. <laughs> Yink. Here's another page of other kids with monsters in their closets and attics. <laughs>
I just imagine the monsters and that they're kind and nice and then that helps me get calm. Mm -hmm. And do you use that too in life when you might get anxious about maybe there's someone new at school and you don't necessarily know what they're thinking or how they're going to be? Does that work too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And what advice would you give to anybody? Does anybody else want to be a writer or write kids books maybe? Nobody? <laughs> okay, well, what I would do. you say to try to, uh, to try to inspire some, some kids to maybe write and, and make books like you've done? Just um, do it. Yeah, just once you have the idea, make it happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And who are some of your favorite authors, or what are you reading right now? Mm, I read a lot of different yes. books. You're reading The Little House on the Prairie series, yeah. Boxcar Children. Yeah. Um, I, I go through different books a lot. Yeah. What was it like working with your mom on the book? It was fun. I liked it. I liked imagining that one day I could actually hold the book like I can now. And now you can, yeah. And you'll be signing books too, so if anybody wants to buy any copies, they're right downstairs at the register. And that's pretty cool. Um, and can you talk a little bit about what you think might be next? Do you want to do another book? Yeah, I think so. Mom, uh, well, Be Brave Press, I, I've been working on an anxiety toolkit for slightly older kids, kind of everybody's age, mostly here. So for like eight to 13 year olds, uh, like a deck of cards to help them deal with anxiety, but also figuring out what anxiety really is. And then there's the concept of the anxiety hill, and we're gonna turn that into a children's book where the idea is when you're anxious about something that's coming up, whether it's a show, like a sports game, or you're about to go get a shot, or you're just nervous to try a slide at the playground, like this one used to be. It feels like a really big hill to climb, and if you don't do it, then the next time you face it, it kind of seems like a mountain, but if you actually do it, then the next time you face it, it seems kind of like a little hill. Mm -hmm. So our next children's picture book will be about a kid who's got a lot of anxiety hills and how she manages them because they turn into mountains, but then eventually she gets them to turn into little. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert, they turn into little small mm hills. -hmm. And Ellie, can you tell us a little bit about Bee Brain Press? Mm -hmm. So I started, once we decided to actually write a book together because as most of you know this one's been writing books since she was in second grade uh, once we decided to write something together and I really wanted to put out a series of books or a collection of products that would help kids with anxiety we I wanted to create sort of my own publishing company so that maybe other therapists Will have ideas but they don't really have the tools to put out books so I can help them make that happen and also we have lots of ideas so I created Be Brave Press as the umbrella for that and then this is our first product. Very cool. And then my last question before it's your turn, um, can you tell us about working with the illustrator? <laughs> that was I think probably our favorite part. Yeah because right? she's super good at doing she studied Drawing. psychology. Yeah, and she also when, Hungary. She, when she was younger, um, to help her um, anxiety, she would draw animals having tea parties, so it's like perfect for mm -hmm. this book. And did you tell her how you wanted the monsters to look and that sort of yeah. thing? I had a very specific mm -hmm. in my mind. This is what she used to draw when she was a kid. When she had a lot of worries, it calmed her down to draw little animals having tea parties. So when we told her about our idea, got really excited to participate in it. But yeah, Talia had the idea, the triplets, they were all straight from T's mind, but Brew just really got it, right? And Grumbles, that, that came straight from T's mind, this little attic dweller. If you hear anything and you don't know what it is, just imagine a Grumbles snacking with Mouse. And then it's a little sillier. What questions do you guys have? Anybody have any comments? From start to finish, how, how long was this process? Yeah. 
and what did you find to be the most challenging part? The year to two years. We started during quarantine and it didn't come out till December 2022. So that's about two years. What was most challenging for you? <laughs> but it seemed like you, you would be like, you would need dad's help with the finance stuff. <laughs> I don't yeah. really know. Yeah. The business side of it is not my favorite part, but the most challenging part of making the actual book would probably be finding the right printing source, because a lot of what I was finding was not the quality that I wanted. And we found this amazing printer in England, and like we wouldn't have been able to do these, this, which is one of my favorite parts. We wouldn't have been able to do that with most printers that we found. And I really wanted it to feel really good and look really good in your hands, like you want to just keep reading it. So that was the toughest part, other than the finances, which I needed to outsource. <laughs> Were there any worries about the book that have gone away? Um, you had one. <laughs> that other people were trying to steal the idea. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Before it was out? I think so. Oh. Remember? No, that was about the cards. <laughs> so cards. everybody keep that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we won't put this on YouTube as a lawyer. with this one, because your idea, no one's coming up with triplets and Paul the Robot. That didn't worry me. Your ideas are more creative than uh, yes. I could But that's imagine. what's so cool about it, is the ideas that you have in your mind, they're your own, but so many other people can relate to that, you know? You can even have the same ideas, but it might look a little bit different. I have a question. So it took you a year to two years, but how often did you work on the books? Did you schedule it, like every Tuesday and Thursday? Or did you just wait till your creative juices were there and then you were like, team meeting right now? <laughs> Neither. Neither. <laughs> option B. We weren't C. as organized as option A. Um, this one's creativity just got it going. She just, she can create, like, literally in her sleep. She will wake up with new ideas. Um, and the writing of the book for me was actually really fast. And then the, we kind of, I think mostly what kept us going was working with Brie, the illustrator, when okay. she would have a new batch of stuff to show us and then it it actually helped us even edit some of the text once I would see oh, it with the illustrations okay. and then every time we got new stuff from her this one we have also edits for her. Like and the there's a time difference too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was it was over the summer so it was easier to coordinate with her but you would have edits for fruit and then edits for me with the text and then there would be lulls like when we were waiting for yeah printing samples and things okay. like that. So it wasn't like we were working for two years. Right, stop. yes, of course, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Any other? Okay. Other than buying a book, what can we do to support you? Share it with anyone that you think it might help. Because that's really the point of what we're doing is like, it's wonderful when friends and family can have a copy of the book, but if it could actually help a kid who's feeling worried about something feel a little bit better about it, or help give the parents some language or a framework to help their kid who's worried about something, and that, that makes us feel really good. Which includes asking your library to carry it? All the Sarasota mm -hmm. County libraries have it. Outside the county? But outside the county, it's a lot trickier. Yeah. We have good supportive friends in the county that helped us make that happen. But elsewhere, it's trickier. So yeah, ask your family that lives in all sorts of other states to just request it at the library, and then they will likely buy it. Yeah. Or I have another question, speaking of feeling good about doing it. On a scale of one to 10, how proud are you of yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Very good. Any other questions? Okay, then we'll still be hanging out. Awesome. You guys can, again, go grab some books and you'll sign them. So let's give another round of applause.